fire started in your home, how much time do you reckon you'd have to get out? 15 minutes? Five minutes? Three? The truth will shock you. Well, bushfires are huge dramatic events that can cause catastrophic loss of life and property. But every year, more than 50 Australians will lose their life in a house fire. And while the total number of those fires has dropped, their ferocity has gone up. And most of us have absolutely no idea. So, to help deliver a reality check, we've commandeered an unsuspecting family. Rod, Marg, Liam and Riley Matthews. I've got my bookshelf, I've just got my bed. And... Whose room we have evil plans for. Well, this is the CSIRO's major fire testing facility. All that is designed to contain a fire of over a thousand degrees. And we've arranged a little surprise for the Matthews family. Right, Riley? Voila. This is Riley's bedroom, what a classic. What have we got? Have a good look. Trophies. The bookshelf. This is an exact replica of young Riley's room. Well, as close as we could make it. Pretty good, yeah. Towels on the floor. The likeness is frightening. Well done. <laughs> so now we're going to torch it. With the help of Fire and Rescue New South Wales. It's on. Look. It started. Now, watch the time code carefully. And by the way, we've used no accelerant here, nothing to stoke the fire. We've simply lit a bit of the bedside table. The fire's just been ignited. And you can see that it's already putting out a thick black smoke that's starting to go up to the ceiling. This is as close as possible to how a natural starting fire would play out in Riley's bedroom and we're showing it to you in real time. Oh, that's all your bookshelf gone. And your pillows. The bean bag's going. Wow, this is only a minute in. What we're looking for is how long it takes to reach flashover, when the whole room ignites. Toxic stuff coming out of the bean bag. Oh my God! What was that? Something melted from the ceiling. That's a light 450 degrees That's now. It. Oh, look at oh that. my God. See? Oh, look at that. Look at the carpet's peeling. See the heat coming up from the carpet? That's paralysis now. Wow. See? Now we have okay. the point where just about everything in the room oh is Oh my goodness, you can feel the heat. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh. No, the soccer ball. Is that what that was? Well, that was like, what, three minutes, two minutes? No, it was two minutes. Goodbye room. Flashover. In just two minutes. I can tell you, the speed has just scared the pants off us. No idea it would go that quick. Nah. I'm pretty minutes. stunned myself. I had no idea what to expect. In fact, we're all completely reeling from what we've just seen. Slowly, it's starting to dawn on us what modern furnishings are made of. We often say that polyurethane foam is like solid petrol anyway. It is made from petrol products. Yeah, so okay. it really, if you have a room that's full of petrol. Petrol. Yeah. And that's a big change from 40 years ago. To illustrate, I've come to the ABC's Prop Storeroom, a cornucopia of 60 years of television production. Well, think back to your childhood if you're my age or if you're younger, imagine an old movie. This is a classic piece of furniture like my grandmother might have owned. It's stylish, it's loungy, but look what it's made of. Hessian and horsehair and springs and this is solid wood. It's all natural materials. Now this 
is more like the furniture we've had since the 70s. And look what this is made of. Foam, plastics, it's all basically made of petrochemicals. In fact, this entire sofa is the equivalent of six litres of petrol. And if you're still not convinced, take a look at this. In a research collaboration, Fire and Rescue New South Wales and the CSIRO compared the old and the new. This room is furnished 1950s style. It takes a whole 17 to 20 minutes to reach flashover. This is a modern room. It hits flashover in just two to three minutes, like Riley's bedroom did. Modern house fires move frighteningly fast, but our awareness of the new danger hasn't caught up. And that is producing this shocking news about deaths in house fires. When we analyse it afterwards, we always find that the people could have got out in about 90% of the cases. The trouble is, we underestimate the speed and ferocity of a real fire. Smoke is black and it's toxic, and that will scorch your lungs and kill you very quickly. We know that people quite often stand up into the hot layer when they are alerted to a fire, get a lungful of hot smoke, and that just either incapacitates them or it scorches their lungs and they die instantly. So that's what we say, get down low and go, go, go. Modern house fires are bad news, but the good news is there's a cheap, simple, reliable technology to help us combat this threat. Smoke alarms. Now, how many of you have alarms that you've disabled because they go off every time you cook? And I'm an idiot because untended cooking is the leading cause of house fires, followed by heaters and electrics. Luckily, there are different types. In my kitchen, I need a photoelectric smoke detector. They're less prone to false alarms. I also need one outside the bedroom, and ideally in the bedroom itself, because it's while you're asleep you're most at risk. Every year, change the battery and clean any dust with the vacuum. And if it feels like a fag, remember that statistic. Around 90% of the people who die in house fires could have got out. But the other big life-saving strategy is to plan an escape route and practice it as a family. If it all goes off, remember, no one will have time to think. With house fires burning faster and more toxic than ever before, no one can afford to be complacent, certainly not me. But when it comes to evacuation, I definitely need to think about some sort of ladder. <laughs> <laughs>